who I believe to be the true birthers of choosing beggars, its entitled parents. Our first one is from Single Associate 8863. So this all happened about two years ago, but it's one of many shitty things my mom, female 35, and stepfather, male 56, did that I have visual proof of. It was Valentine's Day, and one thing about my mom is that she is very flashy during the holidays. We're talking crab tons of expensive gifts, parties, and a house covered in decorations. All of that can be fine, but every time I received a gift from her, it was metaphorically held over my head. I didn't do something correctly. I'm ungrateful and a horrible child that could never deserve their gifts and must be constantly reminded of that. That Valentine's Day, my mom gathered us in the living room to open gifts from her. More than just chocolate or a card, but actual gifts. If it weren't for the pink heart decorations, you would have thought it was Christmas. Then my mom whips out this book she custom ordered. It was supposed to be a children's picture book about our family that the little ones could read as they got older. My problem was that I was nowhere in that book. I wasn't on the cover, I wasn't in any of the pages, and I especially wasn't on the front page where my siblings' names were clearly listed. Her only excuse was that I was being represented by the company's mascot which appeared throughout the book. On the intro page, it says verbatim, Happy Valentine's Day for my beautiful children, blank, blank, and blank. We love you with all of our hearts. We cannot wait to see what God has planned for your life. Love, Mommy and Daddy 2021. Censored names for privacy. Check my profile for photos of the book. To be fair, I'm not even sure how to respond to this outside of it's apparent these parents are complete fucking assholes and I don't understand what they're gaining from excluding a child from the book that's supposed to be for the family. I'm really sorry you have to deal with all that and I really do hope things improve. This next one is by Bossy Yuki. Hi, me and my boyfriend live together with his mom and dad. Let's start with what happened. After living with my boyfriend for the past two years, I've been getting very annoyed at him for things he does. He doesn't clean or even work. He's just lazy. So I decided to confront him about it and tell him that he should help a bit, which I did positively. Hell broke loose. He ran off and after a while came back to the house screaming that he is paying bills and shouldn't do anything, which his parents obviously heard. He has always gotten babied by his parents and he has always gotten a golden throne in the house. Here enters my entitled mother-in-law. Oh my god, did she hurt you or slap you? I obviously denied and started explaining myself. I just told him that he should help around a bit and take care. I don't know why he's acting this way about it. I was being polite. You have no right to gaslight my son about what he should do. My father-in-law decided to come in and be on my side. Well, she is right. He doesn't do anything around the house. To which my mother-in-law decides to explode and yell at him too. Now you too? Stop disrespecting our son and help me scold her. By now, my boyfriend has calmed down and started slowly agreeing with me and the father-in-law. That didn't go well either. Even though everyone was calm and agreeing, the entitled mother-in-law started blowing up again, accusing me of brainwashing her son. I just walked out of there and went to my parents where I'm staying right now. Entitled mother-in-law has always been crazy and does tend to overreact to everything, but this went too far. My boyfriend and father-in-law keep on apologizing to me for her My boyfriend and father-in-law keep on apologizing to me for her behavior which I understand, but I'm not going back again for a while. That just goes to show a parent who their child can never do anything wrong in their eyes and this entitled mother-in-law, that's her son. Her son could do no wrong. Her son could murder an entire group of people and his mother would probably still say he's the victim. This next one is from NaggyNow101. My cousin appeared on national television in a show called Penn and Teller, Fool Us. It's kind of a big deal in my family and while my family and cousins all saw it, my nephew was not allowed to see it. He saw it anyway and his dad told him flat out that magicians are thieves and that his second cousin was now a thief. 
I was pissed and told my nephew's father that is a lie and that my cousin has a real job. Working at the Magic Castle is not a real job. Penn and Teller are thieves who rob people. This is another reason I don't want your family involved in my son's life. Magic is not real. It's bad enough you write fantasy novels. I can tolerate that because it isn't real. I decided to ask how he knew about the show, and he said my mom had been posting non-stop on Facebook about it. This kind of proves they were spying on her. I just laugh it off and tell him, well, the show aired. Nothing you can do about it. Your freeloader cousin and his wife better stop talking to my son about that made-up shit, or I'm calling CPS. Being a magician is not right, and proof he is just as abusive as your mother. Unless he gets proof, he can't really do much about it, but why attack my cousin over a talent he has had since I can remember? So yeah, it freaking sucks that my nephew's father feels threatened by someone else's success. Well, this is clearly a father who has no business being a parent, because they're not really being a parent, they're being a grown-ass child, and I just don't understand how people can function that way. It's fine if you want to bring your kids up a certain way, but trying to tell other people how they're allowed to live their lives, you can't really do that, unless you're super entitled like this father. This next one is by Lufia321. I work in a bar as a supervisor and have been on graves, finishing at 7am. I was counting money front of house and serving. Entitled Mum comes up and orders her drink, and then says, You don't look happy to be here. I respond and say, I'm just tired. This gives Entitled Mum the ammunition she was hoping for, and she fires away saying, I'm a mum, and I haven't been out for seven years. She was basically implying I'm not allowed to be tired. I continue making the drink, respond with the deadpan look, and just say, Okay. Well, I make her drink and then charge her. She then says, You don't seem very sympathetic. I responded by saying, Why does it matter if you have kids? Entitled mom seemed to have an epiphany and said, You're right. I don't understand the audacity of entitled parents, and this is my first encounter with one. It was like Entitled Mom went out of her way to make her story be heard when she was the one who engaged with me for looking tired. I wasn't going out of my way to complain, but she definitely wanted to compare struggles. It makes you wonder if that was her way of trying to potentially get a free drink or something like that. I don't know, just because she's a mom and hasn't been out for seven years doesn't mean that other people in the world aren't allowed to be tired like she apparently assumes. And our final one is from Confoozled Green Bean. So this happened a long time ago, back when I was in 8th grade, 14 years old currently in 11th grade. Anyways, so back in the 6th to 8th grade, I had this one friend, I'll call her C. She was always very sweet and constantly was thinking about others and the environment. In 7th grade, she was diagnosed with cancer. She went into remission at the end of 7th grade and was cancer free for about 4 months before they found a new group of cancer. I hadn't heard from her in a while, but was still in contact with our mutual friends. It was a Tuesday when I got a call from my friend A. She was with a group of my friends when she told me that C had passed. At first, I didn't believe her and told her to stop joking around. Finally, it hit me that she was actually gone, but by that point, I had to go to school. I cried through my entire first hour and second hour. I felt numb for the rest of the day. When I got home, I told my parents I wanted to go to the funeral. My mom was pretty supportive. She didn't want me to miss school, but she knew how much I wanted to be there for my friends and how I needed closure. My entitled dad, on the other hand, said that school was more important and that I shouldn't go unless I needed to. I told him not only did I need to go, but I wanted to be there for my friends. He grumbled and said that it wasn't that big of a deal and that missing school would mess me up. Side note, a distant family member, not my grandma but my cousins, had just passed and my mom had suffered a miscarriage. The day of the funeral, he asked me in the morning if I was absolutely sure that I wanted to miss school for this. I ignored him mostly. I went and cried with my friends. I'm glad I went there because I ended up making amends with an old friend and was able to help another friend who started having a panic attack. 
it helped most of us get a lot closer than we had been. My entitled dad still grumbled about me missing school, but my teachers were understanding and gave me extensions. You know, I'm really sorry you had to go through that, and the fact that your entitled dad acts like saying farewell or goodbye to somebody or even see you later, going to show your respects is a big deal, then what the fuck is he thinking? Honestly, it's as if he's never lost anybody, or when he had, he just didn't give a shit. I'm glad your mom clearly raised you right to actually give a damn because we know your entitled dad wouldn't. Alright, that's enough entitlement for the day. Well, that wraps up this episode of Entitled Parents. If you liked the video, please drop a like, share my content on all of your social media, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload, and drop a comment down below. It really helps with the algorithm and helps new people find my channel. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, have a great day and stay safe out there.